everyone, I'm Ted. Come do physics with me today. Recently I've been doing a lot of drip photography and I discovered that there's a bunch of research papers published on the chaotic nature of a water drip. So I thought, well, let's experiment with that. It'll be really easy. So to get started, um, I'm going to open this valve here and this is just a little valve with a, a cutoff pipette here, a little dripper, could be an eye dripper. And at certain rates, this water will oscillate between different values. And technically, this is called a strange attractor, and it can actually fall into the world of fractals. So here, we're going to examine some of this data, see how it's collected, and I'm going to share with you the tools that I've been developing this week to get to that region of chaos a lot quicker. The first tool that I've developed is a processing environment that graphs out the time between the drips. So to get to chaos, we're looking at the time between one drip and the next drip, but there's problems. And we're going to look at some close-up drip images to see what those problems are and how to fix them. There's the drip formation, 2800 frames per second, and those last drips cause the problems with the timing because they move by the detector oh less than 15 or 20 milliseconds. Here's where the, the real problem is and where the chaos comes from is that oscillating drip at the nozzle. It oscillates back and forth. The flow rate continues. Remember gravity is to the right here and this uh, is, is turned on its side. Here's the second drip as it forms, watch those little tiny drips. They're going to cause timing errors. Look at that little tiny one hit. Transfer of momentum, bounces off. And then we've got that oscillation at the nozzle again. That oscillation is the foundation for the chaotic system here. And it's really wonderful to see this at that 2800 frames per second with a uh, here recorded with a phantom camera. There's a third drip. There it goes. And look at those little tiny driplets form. Transfer momentum as it bounces off. So I set up a, a little detector and this detector looks at a drip of water crossing a laser diode. So here's the pipette that's dripping the water and it's in this little optical setup. It's a little mount that I drilled a hole for the laser. The laser is a 3.5 volt laser and it's red. It goes through a 80 millimeter lens which focuses right down into this region and it continues on to this phototransistor which is uh, hooked up in a very simple circuit. Uh, fairly easy to build. Here's a high-speed image of the drip formation as it crosses that laser path and this is recorded at uh, 1400 frames per second. The flow rate can be changed by moving the valve at the top here and there's a w couple words of warning. Make sure that there is absolutely no air in this tube. If it is, it will mess you up. Also, make sure that the uh, Marriott siphon doesn't run out of water. So to start with, I'm just going to open this valve. And you start to get the, the sound of the lab the last week or so here. It's going to drip. And it drips from this uh, container up here, which is a Marriott siphon. The hose is attached to this little valve and it can, I can change the rate by opening this valve up or closing it. But the most important part about this is the data goes directly to the processing environment and is displayed as a point on this graph. This allows me to find the chaotic region really quickly. By opening this valve up, I can start to see two lines. There we go. I'm, I'm opening it up. The graph drops down to... Uh, a smaller time between drips and, and this is what it's plotting the, the time between the one drip and the next drip and what I want it to do is I want it to oscillate between two paths on this graph 
and without too much trouble we start to see that this is a chaotic region right here and it's oscillating between a couple different values and this is starting to be that fractal area so this is the part of the graphs that we're going to collect data at and we'll do all sorts of other things along the way there's a lot of warnings first of which if your detector is not correctly aligned you can detect one drip and then miss one and your graphs will double there'll be two different lines as a factor of say 20 milliseconds for the first drip you'll see another line at 40 and another line at 60 that's data that's got problems here's what the data looks like the data comes in from that photo transistor it's limited uh, allows the charge to flow to ground through a 10k resistor and this resistor here uh, limits the value the laser is a 3.5 volt laser and it allows the, the trigger point to just be barely adjusted so that you get a good signal. The signal here goes to two different Arduinos. You're like, why in the world are there two? This one right here goes to a cool terminal data logger, which I can just hit a button and it goes right to a uh, comma separated variable text file. And then this second one goes to the display with the processing. It turns out that it's easier to have two different Arduinos doing two different things than to have all of this program exist on one Arduino. Arduinos are fairly inexpensive, so this becomes an easy way to do it. Make sure you share grounds between the Arduino so that they have a common ground. And then here's our data signal that goes to the, the first Arduino and also goes to the second Arduino. Okay, and here's the, the oscilloscope. And you can see that this trace is jumping all around the place because it's measuring the time between sequential drips. But there's some times that it's sort of uh, stable. And by the way, I can change this horizontal so you can see more data. Uh, this is a 50 millisecond per uh, bar. And I can even uh, go 100 so you can see the 100 milliseconds. So you can see the variation that, that will play out. In this case, it's really hard to see this variation because of um, its it's a small variation in relation to that 100 millisecond time scale. So you really want about six drips per second and, um, and there will be a lot of different, different areas of uh, chaotic uh, nature in these drips. So the next thing to do is talk about what this data will look like and how to deal with it. Here we are with Excel and I'm going to use Excel to do the analysis of this data that has been captured by the cool terminal. Um, and, and it's important that, that the data was collected in uh, microsecond resolution. So under here I say file, I'm going to come down to import. It's a text file. Um, I'm going to use this text file. And I'm going to say next. It's comma separated variables. So I say next. Finish. Uh, it tells me where I want to put it. I really want to put it up there. I'm going to import it. And I've made it nice and big so you can see what's going on. One of the things about Cool Terminal is when you first turn it on, it, it puts whatever junk it happens to have in memory there. So here I've highlighted the junk, and then I'm going to delete it. And when I do that, I'm going to shift those numbers up. And here they are. So now I'm going to want to plot this first one, and I'm going to put some, some headers in here uh, that will explain what the data is. I'm going to insert a row. And this first one here is going, I'm going to pick over a couple cells here. I'm going to use three bigger. So this first column, the first one is going to be X, and it's going to equal uh, T, and this T is going to be defined as, as some number of times. The next column is going to be the Y column, and it's going to be defined as the time uh, plus 1. So it's N plus 1, where N represents the data points, which are, uh, which are all times. And the last one here is uh, going to be a, the last column is going to be a Z, and it's going to equal time N plus 1. 
Now, uh, this is, these are big numbers. They're, they're all collected in uh, microseconds, and it, you have to write a really weird Arduino program to collect the data in microseconds, and I will post a link to that somewhere um, or make it available for you all to download. But here, uh, the microseconds are really difficult for plotting. We do need that microsecond resolution when we're looking at this data to get the, the chaotic nature and, and to be able to see the weird stuff these drips do. So I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to pick a big font so it's easy to see. I'm going to say equals this first data set here. I'm now going to divide by 1,000. That will convert the microseconds into um, milliseconds. The next one here, it's, it's equal to this next data point, which is this one down here. And I'm going to say divide by 1,000. And of course, this is my third data point. So I go down three data points, this one, and I divide by 1,000. And this converts my data from uh, microseconds to milliseconds. Now, what I want to do here is I want to pull this data down a couple, uh, probably about the end points. There's about uh, um, 488 data points here. I don't bring this all the way down here because when I do, I get all those zeros. And I really don't want those zeros in the data. I'm just going to bring it up there. So now I've got my data. And the first thing I want to do is to graph the E and the F columns, which is TN versus TN plus 1 is the Y. I go to Insert. I put a scatter plot there. And I get this kind of goofy looking plot. And this is actually the correct plot. This is a chaotic realm for this drip. There's an extraneous data point there. I'm not going to worry about that too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my axes now to um, something that fits a little bit better. And it turns out there's my analysis, my first analysis of the data. And this is the kind of thing you want to see is some sort of arc in this data. Uh, and that will tell you that you are in a chaotic region for this data. Now, there's three columns here of, of data. Uh, there's the X, the Y, and the Z. So these can be uh, graphed in three dimensions, and then you really start to see a weird-looking shape, which tells you that you're in the fractal world. So I've built a little program to do this in uh, Java, writing Java in a uh, processing environment. There's the processing code for this because uh, they do zoom, but the, the spots get much, much bigger as you zoom in. So as you zoom around, you can see that weird point there. And it, it kind of looks like a weird cone, uh, but it is a, a fractal that is there. And of course, I've got some more work to do with my graphing. But uh, that's, a, that's a start on how you handle the data for doing uh, this timing with the drip analysis. Along the way, you're going to learn some really cool physics. Uh, it's a simple experiment. There's about 30 nice published papers on this and all sorts of, of interesting stuff you can do with it. Hope you learned something. Hope you had some fun. Hope you saw some cool things. And I hope you get a chance to try this experiment yourself. Until next time, I'm Ted.